Beef Week's big, I can tell you. It comes around every three years and uh, there'll be over 100,000 people come and celebrate all that is beef. Uh, I've got to say, we are one of the biggest beef exporting nations in the world, uh, in fact, number two. Uh, and our beef producers have had a pretty tough time over the last three years, but we rebounded with some rain. The industry is on the way up. It's a $15 billion industry, and without it, uh, our economy would have been buggered uh, during COVID-19. Mm. Resources and agriculture has lifted us out of this COVID recession, and beef has been at the forefront of it. That said, big spending measures in the budget coming for these agriculture businesses then, I suspect. Well, we made a big commitment in the last budget in October last year, over $320 million to help in the diversification of our markets, being able to send our product beef in particular into, into different marketplaces around the world. And that's already having uh, results. We're seeing now Saudi Arabia, we're allowed to have our beef on their, on their shelves uh, for longer. Uh, but we'll now look and, and put our energy into biosecurity and protecting brand Australia. Uh, we'll make significant investments and the Prime Minister will be in beef uh, to make that announcement with me tomorrow around ramping up our biosecurity efforts. We've already started with increasing penalties. We've cancelled 14 visas of those that have come into this country that didn't declare uh, products in their bags. Uh, we've sent them home and on the plane they came on and they're not allowed back for three years. Uh, we've also increased the fines from just $444 to $2,664 and anyone that wants to import uh, and they do the wrong thing, the fines have gone from $400,000 to over a million and the privilege to be at Her Majesty's pleasure for 10 years. So we're taking biosecurity very seriously. You only have to look at what happened with the pandemic right across this country, what would happen with foot and mouth disease, uh, which would cost us around yeah. $50 billion, or even African swine fever. So uh, this is about protecting it. We'll then be saying to the states, you actually have to kick the tin too. It's important. We understand it's an integrated biosecurity system, not only at our borders, but within the country as well. And this is going to make sure that uh, we protect not only agriculture, we're protecting the environment as well. That said, I mean, you really putting on display here a very heavy-handed approach that this government takes. And it's in the context at the moment of us making it illegal for Australians to come home from India for the next two weeks. Are you comfortable with that? Yes, uh, this is about protecting Australians and facing up to the risks that we are facing as a nation. Well, just we not the 9,000 Australians, Australians that are stuck in India, though. Well, we're going to continue to try and work to make sure we get them back as soon as we possibly can. But the responsibility of any government is to keep its people safe and its borders secure. Uh, that's what we intend to do. And those that are, find themselves on the other side of the border, we will work as quickly as we can, as safely as we can, to make sure we bring you back uh, in a safe way uh, that protects not only you, but those of your loved ones and the rest of the population here in Australia. We, just ha we are just asking people to persevere with us. These are trying circumstances and we are taking the medical advice to make those decisions and to make them soundly to ensure we keep everybody as safe as we possibly can. OK, David Littleproud, uh, you've got a bit of background noise there. It must uh, be music to your ears. It sounds pretty good, I've got to say. Beef Week ramping up <laughs> every three years. Enjoy. Pure cash, Laura. Pure cash behind me.